This is part 146 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss code name function in SQL Server. This function is very useful if you want to code object names. Let's understand the use of this function with a few examples. For the purpose of this demo, we'll be making use of this table, USA Customers. And here is the SQL script to create and populate it with test data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now notice there is a space in the name of the table. And when there is a space like this, if we don't wrap the name of the table within a pair of square brackets, and when we try to execute this, look at that, we get an error, invalid object name USA. On the other hand, in this query, we have the name wrapped in a pair of square brackets. So when we execute this, we get the result that we expect. So this is true even in case of dynamic SQL. If you have got a space in the name of the table, then it has to be wrapped in a pair of square brackets. Otherwise, even in the case of dynamic SQL, we get the same error. Look at this example. Notice within the table name variable, we have the name of the table without a pair of square brackets. Now when we execute this, we get the same error, invalid object name USA. One way to fix this is by including the pair of square brackets within table name variable like this. So at this point, when we execute this dynamic SQL, we get the result that we expect. While this is working, it opens doors for SQL injection because we are building our dynamic SQL statement by concatenating strings. Imagine what's going to happen if somebody injects SQL into this table name variable. So let's say we have this command, drop database sales db. And within our databases folder, we have a database called sales db. So at this point, when we execute this dynamic SQL, we get the result from USA customers table. But then when we refresh this databases folder, notice sales db database is gone. So we are able to inject SQL in this case. Another way to do this is by including this pair of square brackets within this variable at SQL. So instead of having the square brackets here, we can include the square brackets right here. So select star from, we open the square bracket and whatever value we have in the table name variable and then we close the square bracket. Now again, this open doors for SQL injection because imagine if somebody is going to close the square bracket like this, so USA customers, and then we have the command drop database sales db and then we need to comment this closing square bracket in order to avoid any syntax errors so let's include these two characters and let's create the sales db database again and at this point when we execute this dynamic sql we get the data from usa customers when we refresh the databases folder Notice sales db database is gone. Again, even in this case, we are able to inject SQL. So the right way to fix this is by using code name function. So we don't have to include a pair of square brackets like that. And instead, we are going to use code name function. Now, with this code name function, even if somebody tries to inject SQL like this, select star from, USA customers and then we have this command drop database sales db so when I execute this notice we get an error it says invalid object name USA customers drop database sales db so it's basically treating this entire value that is present with this variable at table name as a table name and that's the reason why we get that error if you want to see the query that is generated let's use the print statement and when we execute this look at the query that is generated select star from and within the pair of square brackets whatever value we have specified for this variable all that is included so it's treating all that as a table name and since we don't have a table with that name we get that error invalid object name on the other hand if we include you know the correct table name that we have and when we execute this dynamic sql notice we get the data that we expect if you want to use SQL Server schema name along with the table name, you know, the default schema is DBO. So if I want to use that schema name like that, and when we execute this, notice we are getting an error, invalid object name DBO.USA customers. And if you look at the SQL statement that is generated, 
select star from dbo.usa customers. Now this has got a syntax error. It has to be like this. DBO and then dot USA customers. Now when we execute this, we get the result that we expect. So we have to build our query like this. And to do that, instead of including the schema name in this variable, select star from, we use the code name function here. And let's pass DBO to this function, which is going to wrap it in a pair of square brackets. And to that, we want to append a dot. And then to that, we want to append the name of the table. So when we execute this dynamic SQL, notice we get the result that we expect. This code name function takes two parameters. The first parameter is a string, and the second parameter is a delimiter. We want the string to be wrapped in. The delimiter can be single quote, double quote, or a square bracket. The default is a square bracket. Now, so far in this video, we have only used the first parameter. And since the second parameter, the default for that is a square bracket, whatever string we pass to the code name function, by default, it's wrapped in a pair of square brackets. Now, for some reason, let's say you want that string to be wrapped in a pair of single quotes, then we can explicitly specify the second parameter, the delimiter. So in this case, the delimiter is a single quote. And when we execute this, notice the string USA customers is wrapped in a pair of single quotes. Similarly, if you want that to be wrapped in in a pair of double quotes, then specify the delimiter as a double quote. Now notice it's wrapped in a pair of double quotes. Now if we don't specify the delimiter at all, since the default is a square bracket, the string is wrapped in a pair of square brackets. You can even explicitly specify the delimiter. You can either use you know, this square bracket or this square bracket. Or you can leave it all together because the default is a square bracket. It will be wrapped in a pair of square brackets. Now, you can only specify the delimiter as a single quote, double quote, or left or right square bracket. If you specify any other delimiter apart from these characters, we get null back. So in this case, we are specifying star as the delimiter. When I execute that, look at that, we get null. Now, let's say for some reason, we've got you know a square bracket within the name of our table, for example. And when I execute this, look at that. The square bracket is doubled basically to indicate that as an escape character to remove code name, that is to undo whatever code name function has done, we can make use of parse name function. Let's look at an example. So here we have declared a variable at table name and within that we are storing this as the table name USA customers with a square bracket. Now let's set at table name equals code name and to this code name function let's pass table name variable. And then let's print what we have in our table name variable. So when we execute this, notice the table name USA customers is wrapped in a pair of square brackets. And one of the square brackets, which we have as a part of table name, is double to indicate that it is the name of the table and not any special character. Now, if you want to undo this, undo whatever this code name function has done, we can make use of parse name function. So set at table name equals, let's use the parse name function. And to this, let's pass whatever we have in our table name variable. And again, this function takes two parameters. The first parameter is the object name, and the second parameter is the object part, and it's an integer. It can be one, two, three, or four. One, if it's an object name. Two, if it is the schema name. Three, if it is the database name. And four, if it is the server name. In our case, it's an object name, so I'm going to specify the object part as one. And then let's print the table name. So let's execute all these SQL statements together. 
look at that this is what quote name has uh, done and parse name has done the opposite it has removed quote name it has basically undone what quote name function has done so quote name function takes two parameters the first is a string and the second is a delimiter that you want SQL Server to use to wrap the string in the delimiter can be a left or a right bracket a single quotation mark or a double quotation mark the default for the second parameter is a square bracket and here is an example thank you for listening and have a great day